Hi, I'm Sue Ling. I'm an ST7 anaesthetics trainee working at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital. And recently I was the Airway Fellow working under Imran Ahmed at Guy's Hospital. Together we published a paper looking at the ProView Video Stilette as an awake intubating device. And today I'm going to share some of our experiences with you. Um, disclosures are that um, we were provided with free ProView devices for our case series. Um, however, we did not receive any further funding or um, additional input from FlexiCare. So, what is the ProView intubating stilette? Well, really its novelty is its manoeuvrable tip. And this tip is manoeuvred using a bi-directional wheel, which is at one end of the video stilette. And it moves through flexion of um, 35 degrees. And what's novel is the retroflexion of 60 degrees here. And that's aided via a softer material, which is situated under the cuff. And that's a polyvinyl chloride material and really helps with that maneuverability. Um, so it has an internal rod to it, so it's very malleable and you can shape the video stilette. And that internal rod can be removed like so from inside. The uh, video stilette sits just inside the tip of the tube. So the camera is here and then you can plug it into an external device. So these are, can be a whole range of devices and they are high definition, so it gives you a shared view of the airway. So the tube itself and the video stilette are disposable, um, but the uh, video screens, they are reusable. So what was our experience with this video stilette? Well, we did a case series covering three patients and all of these three patients were predicted to have a difficult airway. So that ranged between ankylosing spondylitis to a patient who had had a maxillectomy and a reconstruction, um, including radiotherapy, and another patient who'd had significant amounts of radiotherapy and had mouth opening of under two centimetres. Um, in all of those patients, we planned an awake tracheal intubation because of that predicted difficult airway. And in two of them, we needed to perform that via the oral route. And that is because um, in one, there was no nasal anatomy, so no route available. And in the other, it was required for actual surgical access because they were performing a fez on that patient. So what advantages did we find? Well, firstly, it was found to be very maneuverable. And um, like we said before, we've got that great um, range of flexion and retroflexion, which is um, a new aspect to a video stilette. Now that meant that you don't need alignment of the oropharynx or the tracheal axis in order to gain a really good view of the glottis. Now, the stilette itself, um, so the internal rod, helps preform the tube. So that really helps with an anterior glottis so that you can really get that angulation in order to get forward on that patient. Where that would also come in useful is if you were using this in tandem with a video laryngoscope or specifically a hyperangulated video laryngoscope. So you'd want to help preform that tube to match the angulation of the blade before you start. We thought that was a really good aspect of this. Now, if you wanted, you can remove that internal stilette and that helps with the pliability of the tube. We did actually do this for one of our patients in the ankylosing spondylitis patient in order to really um, maneuver that tube into the airway. So it can be used as a sole device for intubating the airway, which is great because it avoids um, the utilisation of other instruments to instrument the airway and obviously anything else that you put into the airway can cause bleeding or trauma and swelling and you want to really avoid that. Um, because we use it as a sole device it means that the mouth opening required only needs to be enough to fit the width of the tube. And that's really important because a previous cohort study that's been performed on reasons why people perform an awake tracheal um, intubation found that the single most common 
reason is due to a lack of mouth opening of under 3.5 centimeters. So it's really important for that. Now a video laryngoscope itself, um, you may even find for the significant uh, lack of mouth opening that you can't fit the video laryngoscope blade in because they are uh, much more bulky. Now why wouldn't we use a flexible bronchoscope? Well here, using a flexible bronchoscope um, orally can be quite challenging in itself. So small movements of the tongue or soft tissue can sometimes flick your um, flexible bronchoscope uh, device um, in a direction you weren't intending it to go. Um, and that means that um, maneuvering your way through to the glottis can be tricky. Now that's not the case with a more rigid scope um, where actually you can use the tip to lift up a floppy epiglottis or indeed push away any of the collapsing soft tissues around you. The next thing to say is that the tracheal tip is just proud of the camera at the end of the um, video stilette. And that means that you've got a view of the tip of your endotracheal tube all the way through the process of intubation. Now, that is a major criticism of a flexible bronchoscope when using that to intubate a patient, because although you've got a good view of navigating your way through the airways with the bronchoscope, actually the railroading of the tube over the top of that is blind. So you can cause damage to um, tissue surrounding and indeed impingement. So that can normally happen over the arotenoids. That also extends to video laryngoscopes. So you place the video laryngoscope in the oral cavity and then um, you can see a direct vision of your tube or your bougie that you're using as you place it in the mouth. However, there's a blind moment between that and them appearing on the screen. Um, whereas with the video stilettes, you've got a constant view of your tube, so you can see exactly where it is at all times. So that avoids that risk of trauma or any of those blind moments that you get with the other devices. Now, because it's also proud of the tip of the um, video stilette, it means that it offers a degree of protection of the camera from secretions that may be in the tube. The maneuverability of the tip um, means that you get less of direct trauma to the tissues that you may get from a more rigid um, video stilette. Where this will really come into play is often you find when you're using a video laryngoscope for, an, for a predicted difficult airway and you can see the anterior larynx there, you've got a great view of that, you come to place your tube and you're attempting to get your tube through the glottis on a stilette or using a bougie and actually both of those are moving posteriorly to your glottis and you can't get that anterior flexion up. So with the um, video stilette, firstly you can uh, get that flexion by using the internal rod, but also you can have that additional flexion by using that maneuverability in the tip of the video stilette. So that's when you come to your next challenge, which is even once you've got your bougie into the glottis or your uh, tube on a stilette into the glottis, that actually then, because of that acute angle, you're abutting the anterior wall of the trachea and causing damage to it. And it's quite tricky to get your tube to move posteriorly and further down the trachea. Um, and often we have to try and flip that bougie and turn it 180 degrees to turn the tip downwards. Whereas with this, you can overcome it by using the retroflexion. So you're just into the glottis and now you retroflex it so that you are facing directly down the trachea and then you can proceed forward. And you keep going until you can see the uh, carina. Um, and you can do that without damaging any of the tracheal surfaces because you've got a direct view of where your tube is. Now that's very important, a view of the carina when you're doing an awake tracheal intubation because it is one part of our two point checks, that and also checking for CO2. So once you've got checked for your carina, you can then remove your video stilette. And this is where another advantage takes place, where because the video stilette is clear, actually you can see exactly where your cords are positioned in relation to the two black lines on the tube. And that means that um, you can avoid having your um, cuff sitting within the cords and causing damage that way. And then you remove the stilette like so. We spoke about uh, the maneuverability of this tube. Now, it's very light to hold and you can maneuver that tip with one hand. 
um, like so, um, where you've got your thumb and your first finger moving the bi-directional wheel and the rest of your hand holding the um, tube. And that means when you're standing in the traditional position and intubating a patient, then actually you can use one hand to um, hold this tube and you've got a free hand. So you can use that if you want to, to hold a video laryngoscope or a traditional blade. However, in our hospital, when we perform awake oral intubations, we um, like to do this from standing in front of the patient. And that is so that we've got great eye contact with the patient, we can communicate with them throughout, um, and we can see to what degree of sedation the patient is under as well. It also really helps with the patient's own ventilation when they're sitting upright. So in order to intubate an upright patient, you need to hold the tube in the upside down position. And that means that actually you cannot operate this bi-directional wheel with one hand as well as intubate the patient with the same hand. So what we found was useful was to hold the tube with, um, with your left hand or your non-dominant hand and then use your other hand to move the bi-directional wheel. And that really aided the intubation. So another thing to note is that once you start with um, this video stilette, that you cannot change the tube size. And that's the same when you intubate using a flexible bronchoscope. You've already got your tube attached. When we originally um, publicized our paper, there was a very small range of tubes available. They have now increased their number of sizes um, and it ranges down to a 6.5 tube. So that is great in terms of, we've now got a bigger range of sizes, 6.5 to size eight. However, um, a 6.5 really is on the larger side if you want to use this as a, a nasal intubating device or if you're dealing with very small airways. So I understand that a size 6 is um, in production um, and they're hoping to bring that out in the future. But obviously we are limited by size at this stage. Um, so really the final thing to conclude is that um, we were able to successfully intubate all three of our difficult airway patients using this video stilette as an awake oral intubating device. Um, to note, it's not just the device that you use that leads to success, but also you need to make sure that you have excellent topicalization of the airway, um, a, an appropriate degree of sedation, so that the patient maintains an open airway, a patent airway, and as well as that, um, uh, is spontaneously breathing. And lastly, that you have a really good degree of oxygenation for your patient. So now we're going to uh, show you some videos. Firstly, of the um, video stilette as an oral intubating device on a patient. And then secondly, um, using it on a mannequin. Can you feel the screen? Okay, if you open your mouth for me. Right. Half deflated, is it? Yes. So we've got the glasses. Big breath in. So I have to flex it to the very end. There you go. Now I'll just straighten it. Nice. This is why you need to do the, the other retroversion. Okay, now I've straightened it. Now the railroading is easy because just pull this out. So I'm going to use the ProView Video Stilette as a sole intubating device and I'm going to do it in the traditional setup for intubating a patient. So I'm standing behind the patient. I'm going to use my other hand just to guide the tube placement as we come into the mouth. So as you can see we've got uvula there and I'm just beginning to see epiglottis as well. We want to move behind the epiglottis so I'm using the bi-directional wheel as I go. Now I know I want to look up and under the epiglottis, so I'm just flexing the tip. And as I come into the trachea, I can now use the retroflexion to look down the trachea. 
and ensuring that I'm keeping the tube in the center of the trachea as I go down. Now I can see the carina in the center of my view. Um, so now I've confirmed that I'm in the correct position. I can remove the video stilette. So I'm just coming back. And as we look, we can see through the tube so we can look out for the black lines and see where they sit in relation to the cords. So there's one black line. And we can see it sitting between the cords there and the second black line. And it's ready to ventilate the patient. Okay, so your first attempt is always going to be your best attempt. So you should use the device that's always going to optimize your chance of success at first attempt.